Right, so welcome to this video um, about these two amazing pieces of archery tech. Um, the Bodometer on the right and the Mantis X8 on the left. So this is a versus. Let's have a fight. No, not really. Um, we're going to just look at what they both do, really, um, and which oh, I can't say which one's better. Some people think they both do the same job, but they kind of don't really. Um, there are differences. There are a lot of differences. And I wouldn't say they're really, it's a fair versus fight because they both do different jobs. And we're going to have a look at both of those things and see what they actually do. Um, so let's just start off by comparing the price and the packaging really i mean that's not what's going to make you buy these i don't think unless they're because they're fairly similar priced really so let's start off um with the mantis uh, it's like a padded box that you get although it's not the box that's going to make you buy this nice padded area for you and in the top here you get your usb um, charging cable and you get the mount in it to put onto your bow which is on my bow at the minute that's why it's not in the box um, on the other hand, bodometer box, uh, cardboard box. So there's no kind of case to carry it around with mainly because it should be, I suppose on your bow anyway. Um, but then when you open it up, this is where your bodometer would be. And then underneath here, you've got your mount that you put on with Velcro. Although you can, some bolt holes there, so you can bolt it onto things as well. If you want to see more about me unboxing this, I've done a separate unboxing video about this bodometer. And then obviously you get quite a nice braided, bigger, longer cable than the, than the Mantis. Um, but that's it. So you don't really get a carrying case for this. So that's really sort of what you get in the bodometer box there. So that's sort of having a look at the two kind of... Um, things so let's have a look at cost right so what are we looking at when it comes to the pricing it's a good question what are we looking at right so in dollars these are taken from lancaster because i thought that was a fairly good place to look at in the us the mantis is 149 149 bucks and the bodometer is 119 dollars if we have a look in great british pounds then we're looking at 140 pounds and 109 pounds was the kind of cheapest I could find the bodometer in the UK. So there's a difference, if you're quick at maths, $30 or roughly 30 pounds. So it's the same difference between the two. Okay, so there's not a lot in it. Um, so why are you watching this video? Well, you might be someone who's got a bodometer already. You might be someone who's got a mantis already. Uh, and you're thinking about buying one or the other as well. I'm not going to get both of them. Or you're thinking about buying one of them. You don't know which you want to buy. Um, or you've got both of them as well. And you just want to see what I think about it. So if you've got either of these, please comment in the uh, comment section below. And tell me what you think about them. Um, whether you've got one or you've got both. And if you're trying to use both at the same time or on different bows or something like that. That would be really helpful to get your opinions on them as well. So we've looked at cost. We've looked at what they, uh, how they come wrapped really, but uh, they're fairly similar in other ways. They both charge via USB, USB ports on the side, uh, lights to show you when they're charged. There's an LED color around here that lights up to tell you when it's charged or when you're using it. So that's where the kind of similarities end. They both need charging. They both use Bluetooth as well. But on the Mantis, you'll see it's just a block that you slide on to your bow and there's no screen. Okay, so you need to use an app with that. Okay, very important. You need to use an app. Now, the Bodometer has an app as well, and it's in version one at the moment, as of, I'm making this video towards the end of March, but there's a new one, version two of the app coming out in April. So I haven't seen that yet. It's in beta test. Some people are testing that out as we speak, and that will add, add a lot more functionality to it. 
but as you can tell with the bodometer you get a screen yes so you don't need to use an app it's better to use the app because you get a lot more information um, and the information on the uh, screen here is quite limited but you can operate it without the app there's no problem you can see your total count you can see how many um, shots you've made per session you can start a new session um, by pressing the buttons and you can uh, pair to the app you can power it down uh, to conserve battery life uh, via these buttons as well so there's not a lot you can't do and you can just briefly position it where you want on the bow to see what you uh, think about it what, what you can basically position it to see what you shots you've made what score what xi number you're getting and things like that so that's it really when it comes to the actual items itself now it's really what they do that differs between these two objects so we really want to go and have a look at the apps again and look at the software okay what it boils down to really is that the bodometer basically counts your shots okay but you think wow that's, a, that's quite pricey for something that's just going to count my shots but it does do more than that and it also what it really does is it gives you an xi number this xi number which is a single number so all of your data that you're providing it your kind of timings your release your canting the bow your angles all that sort of thing it's putting it's compressing that all down to one number which uh, goes from zero to a hundred where 50 is your normal kind of shot and you can level up through it and things like that as well so you're getting it's like a video game really leveling up it does motivate you i must admit i've been going out and going right i'm going to level this thing up i'm going to shoot more and it also obviously records how many shots you've made in the app in the last seven days so it's going well i haven't made many shots this week i need to go out and shoot more and it's really good to say wow well, look i've shot 500 arrows this week because you've gone out and used it more so it does motivate you in that way i must admit uh the mantis obviously will count your shots but it's not a kind of total counter sort of thing really it will count your shots um, because it knows how many shots you've made but it does a lot more it will show you a lot more data it will break down your shots um, left right canting you will see a graphic and video of the sort of movement of your bow it will account for your clicker um, god you can set up different bow setups on it for compounds and recurves left and right hands Wow, um, it will do your canting. It will show your timings as well. What else does it do? They've both got social sides of things. So you can um, look at, you can share your kind of results with other friends to see how many arrows they're shooting on the bodometer. Um, and it's quite social and the same on the Mantis as well. But we're going to look at the apps now to really just show this thing off to see what sort of data you can actually get out of it um, to see how that works. We'll have a quick rundown look of the Mantis um, app. If you want to know more about this, I have done separate videos on both the Bodometer apps and the Mantis app, but just for this sort of video comparing the two, let's just have a quick look if you haven't watched those videos. So this is the Mantis app um, once it's opened up. I've not connected the uh, dongle at all, so we're just going to look at past data that I've done. So I'm just going to click on the History tab at the bottom here. And you can see here, this is the kind of data that we get out of uh, Mantis. So it does count the shots on the top here. So we've got a total count um, and we've got a number of sessions and our average. So in a way it kind of does count your shots. And it also tells me per session, how many shots I've uh, taken as well. So similar to the bodometer in a way, but also gives you a lot more than the bodometer. So this is a bit like the uh, XI number in the bodometer. This gives you an overall session uh, number average score as well out of 100. Now, if we click on to one of these, uh, we get, you can notice that we get a lot of information on here. What we get along the bottom is we get each of our arrows in turn. So we can click on that. Uh, we can add notes as well to it and then what we can do is we can actually just like a video play the actual shot we get a lot of information we've got a stability score we've got some i don't even know what that is moving uh, up and down left and right probably of the bow um 
I've got the clicker option set here. So if I just go back and you can play it just like a video. So you can see here between the two dots that I've got um, where I think I ended up, where I was holding it when the clicker went off and where I actually ended up, the arrow ended up sort of going, I think is what that is. So this is seconds here from my kind of hold down to um, when I took the shot in the white X. And then if we want to, we can go to setup. So this is the full video on here. You can actually just pinch and zoom. If I was on my phone, I could actually pinch, pinch and zoom into the uh, target. But this is the, just the part of the setup. So as you can see, we've got the movement that I made on the setup and we've got the up and down graph at the bottom and the left and right graph on, on the on the bottom there as well. So you can sort of read a lot of information on that. And then this was my hold again, up and down, left and right, whether your hold was kind of good or not. And then finally the release, which again, up and down, left and right. So it splits it down into all of these sections and gives you all of this kind of data. And this is the trace screen we're on at the top here. So I'll just go back to the full, and then if you click on to the pitch or cant, you, each uh, arrow is in a vertical section, so you can see how many degrees from top and bottom you kind of canted the bow or pitched it. And then at top here, we've got timings as well. So we've got split timings, hold setups, and total times for the shot. And then finally, the sort of big difference with mantis is that you have to tell it where each shot went okay which obviously you don't do on the bodometer the bodometer does not know where your arrow has gone it could have been a miss it could have been an x it just does not know so on here you would plot each of your scores once you've taken them now that can be tricky because if you're shooting 70 meters, 100 meters, 100 meters, 90 meters even, um, 100 yards I was thinking of, but 90 meters, then you probably couldn't see the arrows. Uh, you'd have to have, you'd have to be looking through your scope, which is a bit off-putting if you have to then when you're training, look through to find out where they, where they got to, or you could walk down to the boss. If you shot the uh, arrows in number order, then you could probably then uh, point, put where your six arrows kind of went to. But yeah, so plotting the arrows on the, on the target does give you a lot more uh, data, a lot more things to look at. So yeah, there's a lot more visual aspects in the Mantis um, app. And it's app only, so you need to be using the app, unlike the Bodometer. So there's a lot in here. And if we just quickly look at settings as well so we've got recurve or compound i can add a bow setup now as well uh, left or right hand where i've placed the actual dongle and the difference in here as well that if you go to your target and your distance you can set up what distance you're shooting at uh, more importantly the target type you're actually shooting on and the size of the target as well which obviously because because on the bodometer, you're not telling it where the arrow went. It doesn't have any of that information in it. So that's a quick rundown of the Mantis app. Now let's go and have a look at the bodometer app. So this is bodometer app. This is version 1.3. By This is mid-March 2021. Uh, by the time you've watched this, it might be the new app, version 2 out because I think that's coming out in April 2021. So it might look totally different to this, and there might be new functionality, um, and nice pretty graphs and things that I don't know about. But in the Bodometer app, you get to see how many shots here at the top, how many shots you've made in the last seven days, your level number that I spoke of about sort of leveling up, and your last session is here. And on the snapshot, it tells you how many shots you've made in total, how many sessions that's over, and how long you've been active for in days, hours, and minutes. If I go on to sessions, then I can see 
the latest session. These are all my previous sessions down here. This is my latest one with my spread. We talk about this XI number. Uh, my spread is my highest minus my lowest score. And it tells me I shot 61 arrows. And if I click onto that, basically this is the data I get. I get to see the spread as I showed before and the ranges of that spread from 31.9 to 76.2. Tells me I shot for 33 minutes and I was on level one still. And then, then it goes into the individual shots. So all of the shots that I made. I don't know why it's showing 61 because I actually shot 62 by the looks of it. So if I click on this one, then I get another screen and this shows me just as an arrow where I was on the scale and it does tell me my angles. Now, this is a bit like the pin pitching and canting on the Mantis, but this, as you can place the bodometer vertically, horizontally, anywhere you want, these angles will depend on the which way you've positioned the bodometer. If you want to know more about that, then you need to watch one of my other videos where I talk about the setup and using of the bodometer. And then with these buttons, you can flick through your um, various previous shots. But on this version of the app, that's all you see. So as you can probably tell, it's quite limited compared to what the Mantis is showing you with all of your graphs and videos and uh, breakdowns and timings and all things like that. But you do get an overall kind of dumbed down number um, which may be good enough for you, you know, if that's all you want to see. If that's all you want to see is an overall kind of um, number and you get motivated to go out and shoot some more and you see this lovely kind of shot counter number and you see how many you've shot in the last seven days and your total shots, you know, we like to see big numbers, don't we? Um, then this is for you, really. Again, it's got the normal social side. I think we've talked about that before. So that's version one of the Bodometer app. I hope that's helped just looking at the two sort of versions of them, really, to kind of weigh up what sort of functionality they've got. So just to sum up, um, it's really difficult to say which one I prefer or which one I'd recommend, because they both do different kind of jobs. Um, I enjoy having them both on the bow. For a fun aspect and to get you more motivated and to shoot more arrows, I would say the bodometer was probably better for you. I mean, they do call it the Fitbit of the kind of archery world. So in a way it is. Um, so you can shoot with it, leave it on the bow. Don't worry about it. Um, charge it up when you need to with both of them and the bodometer will just kind of keep going really and just count up your shots and give you an overall number but what it doesn't do is it won't give you advice uh, well the, the mantis doesn't yet either but it won't kind of it gives you this number and sometimes you think oh why, why did i shoot over um above my normal shot like a 70 out of 100 that felt like a really awful shot um whereas sometimes it'll you think you've shot a really good shot and it'll go a 30 out of 100 and you think why was that um so it doesn't give you a great deal of information whereas if you went to the mantis and said well why did it give me um a below average kind of score you can then look at the graphs and look at the kind of left and right and think oh my timing was bad the cant of the bow was bad um things like that and you'll kind of be able to kind of work it out yourself um mantis are going to come back with more information on kind of and tips really on your shots that's not in there at the moment um but I hopefully they'll do that because i think that's where the mantis falls short um and so does the bodometer really but it doesn't give you the answers it's not going to say ah oh, you're doing this so you need to do this to improve your score i think that's where they could both be improved really so the great thing to remember about these apps is that although the hardware doesn't change that what you buy, um, the firmware inside can be updated by the companies and also obviously the software that's in the apps can be updated. And the Mantis has already had a couple of updates. Um, they've added things like bow setups, um, different 
target faces they've added uh, the clicker option as well for recurve so that's been pretty good really he's already have seen a few updates it's like getting a new kind of um, product for free really which is good and obviously the support is still there as well and you're sort of getting a new new app um, and the bodometer is obviously coming out with the new uh, app as well what also is great is that these products are gathering a lot of movement and a lot of different sorts of data and it's really just up to the companies to uh, come up with ways of showing us that data in a really easy to use way so that we understand it and we can improve our shooting so even if you might buy one of these um, right now you might find that in six 12 months time that the apps can be updated and and you'll get um, a lot more out of them than what is currently being offered so tell me what you think, um, whether you've got one or the other and you like it or you dislike it or you've got them both or uh, which one you're thinking about buying, really. That's all for now. Thanks for watching the video. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, give us a like and don't forget to subscribe to the channel. See you soon.